So we're looking at equilibrium here, an application of Newton's first law. Um, Newton's first law, as a quick reminder, um, roughly speaking, says uh, for uh, any object that's undergoing motion, whether that motion is zero motion or constant, constant motion, um, it will require an external force, a net external force, in order to change that motion. Another way of saying it is objects at rest stay at rest and objects undergoing constant velocity stay at constant velocity. So what we're going to look at here is that in a uh, the sum of the forces um, and the sum of the torques to show Newton's first law in action. So we have a situation where we have this person here standing on a plank. Okay, the plank is length L and the person is standing a distance D uh, from one end. We've got uh, position A and position B. Um, to mark the two ends of the plank and perhaps it's standing on, uh, it could be scaffolding, standing on the stand at either end, a sawhorse or something like that. Okay, and we consider, just for later reference when we're talking about, when we're discussing torque, just to prevent confusion there, the uh, A and B, those little triangles represent pivot points, or potential pivot points anyway. So, um, we know that this uh, object, or this whole situation, the system, is at rest. So system at rest. That means the forces must be balanced on it, um, otherwise it would be accelerating in some direction or other. So we can take the sum of the forces to be equal to zero. And there's a special way of writing this. We use sigma, the capital letter sigma from the Greek alphabet, and F, to indicate the sum of the forces when we add them all up, equals zero. Okay, now, in the similar sense, the sum of the torques must also be zero. The sum of the turning forces, otherwise we would be accelerating in a rotational sense. So, for instance, if point A was fixed and point e, B was not fixed, um, and there, were, uh, there was no support force here, um, then there would be a rotation in this direction. The person would fall, the plank would slip, and that the sum of the torques wouldn't be zero. But in this case, it is zero. Um, so Newton's first law um, is holding true with regard to that. Uh, so it's useful if we're trying to... Uh, I'll, I'll draw you this equation. We also have the sum of the torques. Remember our funny T, Greek letter tau, lots of Greek letters, equals zero. We can write these equations in a little bit more detail if we label uh, all of the forces here. So first of all, we've got the weight force of the plank acting down through the center of mass of the plank. I'll call that Fp for the plank. Okay, um, And we've got, the, that's probably going to be much less than the weight force of the person, which is acting down through the center of the person. So we'll, we'll write that down here and roughly, um, well definitely not to scale, but showing that the um, force of gravity on the person, Fg, is uh, greater than the force on the plank. Um, and there'll be two support forces, support force up at A, FA, and a support force up at position B, FB. And we would expect, um, just as a little aside, we would expect FA to be larger than FB, since uh, the person is standing closer by, according, according to the diagram, appears to be closer anyway. Fair assumption to say that he's probably standing closer, so FA is going to be larger than FB. Now we can uh, we can write these equations. Um, we'll just make a little bit more space. We can write these equations um, in such a way that uh, we can actually do something with them, do some calculations. And this is what we're getting to at the heart of it: is trying to find um, unknown forces or unknown uh, distances, whether it's the length d l or the length here which is L minus D, um, we, can, we can solve problems. So we've got two equations, and usually that means we can solve situations where we have at least two unknowns, but sometimes we have three unknowns, and we can reduce one of our unknowns by using one trick, and that is making our pivot point for our torque equation um, at one end, because then the perpendicular distance between which the pivot point and the force applies is zero, so the force times distance, the torque, the turning force, will be zero for that. Anyway, let's go ahead and write an equation for the sum of the forces. The sum of the forces equals zero, which equals 
Um, if A, we're defining up as positive, plus if B, and uh, now because down is negative, then it's going to be minus if G, um, minus if P, and that equals zero. You could rearrange that into positive sense and say if A plus if B equals if G plus if P. Um, or if you just had them all adding positively, that would mean the number that the variable represents will be negative. Okay, in any case, moving on, some of the torques equals zero, and we're starting if A is our pivot point, so um, we can define uh, clockwise as our positive, that means our, um, our, our anti-clockwise is going to be negative, um, just the same way that we had up was positive and down was negative. Um, let's, let's go ahead with our torque. So um, we've got the force times the distance. So if G or if A times zero distance was zero, so we'll leave that one out. So if G times by the distance D, and put brackets around it just because it's a little bit easier to uh, isolate that as one torque, um, plus uh, we've got halfway along the length, so it's L over two is the distance times by FB. See with these equa equa um, equations and questions like this, it's, you often mix up um, the order of the distance times the force or the force times the distance. I, I tend to do distance times force because when you're looking at it, you look at the distance first and then you times it by the force that's being applied. But uh, I've been inconsistent here, um, which is a little bit um, bad of me, but uh, you'll get the idea. Okay. Anyway, there's one more. It's in the opposite direction, so we'll call it minus. And it is FB times by the length L. So that's our equation. Um, you can see we got rid of FA, um, which means uh, we, we, can, we can calculate something that previously we probably couldn't calculate. Um, you may... I'll do an example and uh, we'll do some calculations in the subsequent video, but that'll do for now. Main thing is Newton's first law holding true. Some of the forces, some of the torques equal zero, therefore there is no change in the motion. Equilibrium is what it's called when the motion is uh, zero and constant.